All right, today we're going to talk about introduction to parent functions, section 1-9. All right, we're just going to go through over a brief review, basically over um, a lot of the graphs we're going to focus on this year, just so you have an idea, so you can identify the types of graphs when we start talking about them, um, so you can kind of visualize what they should look like. Okay, if you have an idea what the graph should look like, um, a lot of times they'll help you get the correct answers when you start working through it. All right, so introduction to parent function, section 1-9. First thing we're talking about is, well, what is a parent function? A parent function is the simplest function with the defining characteristics of the family. That's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about what are the characteristics of this function. Okay, so if I see this graph, or if I see this equation, what do I know the graph should kind of look like? And that's really what we want to identify today. Um, functions in the same family are transformations of their parent functions. Um, f of x equals x is a parent function for g of x equals x plus 4 h of x equals 5x minus 3, okay? Um, here's what we're going to talk about first. We all know the equation y equals x, right? All right? Does everybody agree like that black line is y equals x? All right? Let's say I gave you the equation, so this is what? y equals x. What if I gave you the equation y equals x plus 2? Well, it's the same line, right? What's the difference now? My graph has shifted what? Up to units. Okay, notice. I went up to... I went up to. All right, that's what we're going to talk about today. It's kind of how these graphs should look or where they should really look at. All right, so we're going to talk about the parent functions. All right, here are the parent functions we're going to talk about. The first one is the linear function. The linear function is f of x equals x. What's the root word in linear? The root word is? Line. line. So anytime I have a linear, I should have a what? I should have a line graph. Okay, I should have a line graph. So my line graph is based off the equation y equals x. Next, I have quadratic. Notice quadratic is anytime I have an x squared. Okay, anytime I have the equation x squared. Now, what is the name of that quadratic graph? That's actually called a, we talked about it last week. Starts with a p? Parabola, yeah. Anytime you have an x squared, that's what's going to get us what is called a parabola. All right, anytime we have an x squared, that's going to get us a parabola. Next, we have a cubic. Um, anytime, think, about, think back in geometry, right? When you had, like, something yards, that's like cubed, right? Okay, so we all know the third exponent's cubed. So same thing here. If I have a cubed term, um, that's going to give me what's called a cubic graph. Okay, it's going to give me what's called a cubic graph. And the last one we're going to talk about is the square root. Now, a square root is probably the easiest to identify why. Because <coughs> it has a square root symbol in it, right? So the square root of x there. Notice the square root of x. On the square root of x graph, do I have a full graph here? Why can it not be down here? Um, for instance, on this one. Does anybody know why? Yeah, square root can't be negative yet, right? We'll get to negative square roots later on. Those are what's called imaginary numbers. But for today, yeah, we're talking about functions. Um, function square roots cannot be negative. So what's the smallest value you can have underneath the square root? The smallest value is the number zero. What's square root zero? Zero. So the smallest number I can have underneath there is actually zero. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We want to identify functions. So if I look right here, g of x equals x cubed minus one. Well, knowing it's x cubed tells me right away this is a cubic function. And the minus one tells me that I'm going to go down one unit. So if you look here to this graph, we just shifted the thing down one unit, and it's the same exact graph. Okay, So we want to identify these functions. Let's try number one here. Identifying parent functions. Number one, f of x equals x squared minus 5. Okay, what's the x squared? Tell me right away, Chow. That'd be a quadratic function. Now, what does that minus 5 tell me, beast? Down five. Yeah, so it'd be a quadratic function down 5. So if I were to look at a graph here, if I were to think about this in graph terms, my graph would look something like this now. Okay, so again, we just want to have that basis idea of what should these graphs look like. So later on, we start dealing with a lot more in-depth information on this. I know right away, I can visualize what this would look like. Um, number two, g of x equals the square root of x plus one. Bennis, what are you thinking here? Um, well, can't go negative square root, so I don't know how to 
Well, what's my parent function? This is a what? Yeah, this would be a square root graph. Okay, this would be a square root graph. Now, does everybody see how this plus one is on the inside? Okay, this is actually shifted opposite when it's on the, when it's on the inside. This is actually shifted left one. Okay, now I'll, I'll explain why here. Does everybody see what's in on the inside? This is different than if I were to say the square root of x plus one. Notice that plus one's always on the outside. This is what's always called my constant here. The constant's always usually the last number in the terms, like this negative five, that's my constant. The constant's always gonna be my y-intercept, all right? But when I have it inside my um, square root, that means I'm gonna shift it left or right, and it's opposite. So it's plus one means I'm gonna shift it left one. So I'm shifting it the negative direction. All right, so that one's kind of a little different there when it's on the inside. Number three. Um, I'm going to look right here. Negative 2x plus 1. Joe Daniels, what's the parent function there? That would be a linear function. Now, a couple things here. What does this plus 1 on the outside tell me, Jace? So, shift it up one, right? What does this negative 2 tell me? What's that negative tell me about my slope or my graph? Rob? Yeah, my graph's actually going to go this way, right? Yeah, my graph's actually flipped. The negative means I have a negative slope, so my graph's going to be flipped. Okay, and negative 2. So if I tell you 2 slope, is my graph going to be steeper or shorter? Or steeper or not as steep? Steeper, right? The bigger the number, the steeper the slope. Okay, so if it's negative 2, um, it's going to be steeper than negative 1. Yep, nice job. All right, same idea here. Take a couple seconds, try these three on your own. All right, number 4. I want to identify the parent function. Crump, what parent function would that be? What would it be? <laughs> so it would be A? That would be a cubic function. Nice job. Yeah, it's a cubic function. Okay. Number five, if I look right here, what's my parent function going to be, Katie? Quadratic. <clears throat> now, Katie... We know some quadratics here. What's this plus 2 tell me in quadratic, Katie? Okay, so I'm going to shift it up to. What's this negative tell me about that quadratic? What would you suppose? Rob? Yeah, like yeah now my parabola is going to go down. Because it's negative, that means my parabola is going to go down. Um, if you look over here on the wall, actually, um, you have an example of a parabola that looks down. And notice, again, negative slope out front. Okay, so if it's negative, my slope's going to go down. If it's positive, I'm going up with a U. If it's down, I'm going N. Looks like I don't know, an N or something, something like that. And then six, um, F of X equals negative X. Oh, let's go with Jake King. What's my parent function there? That'd be a linear function. And what's that negative tell me again, Jake? So it's going to go down, left to right, right? Very good. So that's a linear function there. All right, so again, have that idea of what do these parent functions look like. So when we're going through the rest of this year, I'm um, talking about these different types of graphs. When you look at it, when you look at an equation, you should, already, you should almost picture what it would look like in your mind already. All right, next thing we're talking about is you can identify parent functions based on their points. So for example here, I'm going to plot points. Um, I have the coordinates, you know, what I have here, 2, 0, uh, 1, 1, 3, 1, <laughs> 0, 4, 4, 4. Okay, then I kind of connect the dots here, and I have what type of graph here? This is a, yeah, that'd be a quadratic graph because it's a parabola. Now, where's this quadratic shifted from? How's it shifted? Because remember, I always usually start at 0, 0. So instead of at 0, 0, which way am I actually? Two units to the? Right. Yeah. This is actually shifted two units to the right there because I went two units over so I can look at how this graph gets shifted as well. All right. So let's try number seven here. I have x equals negative 2, y equals 1. So I'm going to plot the coordinates negative 2, 1. And then I have uh, negative 1, negative 2. And then I have 0, negative 3. 1, negative 2. And 2, 1. So I connect my dots. Okay. 
right away I should just kind of have a visual. What type of graph is this, Kyle? That is a quadratic. Kyle, how is that graph shifted from its parent function? So usually parent function starts at 0, 0, right? So how far is it shifted? Yeah, so this one is shifted down 3. So it's a quadratic function shifted down 3. That's the parent function. Nice job. Try and bring it on your own. Take a couple seconds, try and bring it on your own. Same idea, plot the coordinates, find the parent function. All right, so let's plot the coordinates here. I have negative 2, 2, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2. Connect my dots. What is my parent function here, McCoolidge? That is a linear graph. Okay. Who knows what the transformation of this is? Allie? Yeah, it actually has a negative slope here. So it's just flipped. So my graph would be like y equals negative x there. It's just flipped over around. Nice job. And there's your sentence.